Tiger fans, thanks for tuning in for a new week of Tiger Time out here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton with you as we comb through Tiger and Lady Tiger basketball from this past weekend. And uh, we also look ahead as it is tournament season across the Mid-South Conference. Both of those two teams in action this coming weekend as the head coach, Ginger High Colvin, joins me from the Lady Tigers. The champ is here as uh, the regular season uh, champions in the Mid-South coach. I know you've had a, a few days now to, to process what was kind of a, a wild, crazy weekend. Yep. Uh, you never know how the ball's going to bounce. You hope you get a little luck here and there along right, the way. Yeah. You cashed it all in there on Saturday. I think anytime you ever win anything like that, you have to have a little luck, and, and we did. So the, we just all we could do was take care of what we we're able to take care of. And, and leading up to that, you know, we, we talked a lot about Saturday and, and different things, but you had a big one at home against Georgetown right. on Thursday. And we come to that final weekend and uh, here you are neck and neck with Thomas Moore and mm -hmm. a couple of really good teams on the back end, knowing that Cumberland's and, uh, and Pikeville are right. awaiting you. And you're, oh, by the way, let's take on maybe your biggest rival and uh, <laughs> a coach that you've had some of your greatest battles with. Yep and all that kind of mixed in there. It almost gets a little lost in the shuffle thinking about it. Yep. It's a really good Georgetown team. They've got some of the best mm -hmm. posts uh, in the league and you guys uh, held serve at home. We did, uh, and that's the, the thing about Georgetown is I really believe they'll make a run in this tournament. I think they're that good and um, they've been a little up and down this season, had some changes at the break and um, it's, a, it's a good Georgetown team, very physical. Um, I just can't say enough good things about them. I think they could really make do some damage. So that was a huge win for us, uh, considering everything that was to come. And, you know, Caitlin Wilkes, we've talked about her a lot. We'll talk about her a little more. But uh, really early in that game against Georgetown mm -hmm. was kind of the yep. rudder in the water uh, yes. and helped kind of pace you guys. At literally, the rudder in the water, it was, it was raining cats and dogs there on Thursday. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she kind of helped kind of, I don't know, it just really it's – at times you throw it into her and you just trust, you just know mm -hmm. that she's gonna be able to get you a, a bucket and right. that's gotta be a good feeling. Yeah, have. she's been a steady for us. There's no doubt about it. Um, we talk about, you know, kids we go to and I don't think we really, I know after uh, the year Lindsey Bird graduated, I go back and watch film during the summer and I was like, holy smokes, I put everything on her. You know, we just did a lot to, for her. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes now with Kate, we're doing the same. and. Uh, we're just going to her because she's so efficient right now and um, we're doing a good job getting it to her but you know to the for the rest of the kids defense it's oh, it's pretty open when you've got kids like Maddie Bull, Bailey Pedigo, those kids that are standing out there shooting and and being very efficient at their positions. Courtney Pritchett who's a four is one of the best three-point shooters in the country so that's a uh, it really pulls that defense out and if people want to double down on her, that works for us because it opens our shooters up. If you could pick the way you would have it structured, I think you've got it perfect. I yeah. mean, you know, and even like Bailey and Lauren are two gals that'll stand out there and uh, be open. Mm -hmm. They're going to shoot them here and there, but they're, they're going to take the ones that make sense. They're not going to yeah. force anything more than capable of hitting them. They are. So it's, you know, if you're Caitlin Wilkes and you start to think, oh, I mean, you know, this is the way right. I like to have it structured around me. It's a, it's a pretty good yeah. group. And then you bring that bench in with Sarah Sutton and uh, and Bert, and they you know they stretch it even more. Uh, so that that just helps us tremendously on on how to get the ball to Kate. And going into Saturday to to kind of set the scenario, the Lady Tigers knew with a win. Uh, worst case scenario, they tie the Mid South Conference regular mm -hmm. season championship with Thomas Moore. Uh, Thomas Moore would have had the tiebreaker had both teams won. Campbellsville needed. Uh, a win and a Thomas Moore loss to be the one seed, get an automatic bid. And Coach, do you even think about the automatic bid? I mean, you're sitting at three in the country at that moment. It really doesn't matter. It's cool maybe to say you've got it. Of course, the conference right. championship means more than the automatic bid, I guess. Uh, it, it, there's a little, there's some layers to that, I think. There are layers. I think to get the automatic bid in a conference where a team's been ranked number one all season says a lot. And uh, then you've got four teams are in the top 25. And to get that automatic bid when I think Freed Hardman and Georgetown are top 25 teams. Mm -hmm. I think Pikeville's a top 10 team. Um, so it's, you know, you talk about top 25 teams, but I think that when you take the whole of our league and uh, you take a couple teams, if they didn't have some players get hurt, that would be in that fight too. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with that. I know um, you always want, you always want the, the, the best. Mm -hmm. You always want that, that automatic bid if you can have it. And yeah, it's nice to have. It's not something you put a lot of thought into. Uh, because you know you're already going to the national tournament, but it's nice to have. Campbellsville gets a 93-77 to 77 win over Cumberland's 
on Saturday as we take a look at some of the numbers. Caitlin Wilkes, Courtney Pritchett, Matty Boyle, and Bailey Pedigo all terrific for the Lady Tigers. And, and Coach, that game was close uh, coming down the stretch, actually heading to the fourth quarter and then a 15-0 run hits, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of threes in there, and, and really the game was decided in about a three and a half minute right. stretch to begin the fourth quarter. You look up mm -hmm. what was a three to five point ball game, yeah. all of a sudden it's close to 20, and, and that was the difference. And, and here you were kind of, I won't say coasting down the stretch, but you had this large mm -hmm. lead and, and unbeknownst to you, I'm watching <laughs> Pikeville and Thomas Moore on, on the iPad trying to keep up with everything and mm -hmm. that thing you know is coming yeah. down to the wire uh it didn't get maybe quite as crazy for you on the floor i know everybody in the stands knew what was going on yeah. uh, lady tiger fans you didn't find out till a bit later that everything right. you needed to have happen yeah. happened for you there well you'd promised me during the game that you would do a dance you never looked at me i did look up once one, okay i, I did look it. up once and uh there was no dance going on i, so, I said uh, if, if you look up and i'm doing like the rick flair strut yes, you, did. you know that yes. uh that so there was good. Uh, i looked up and um, um I'm, you were into something else and i, and I thought no there's no i was, rick I was flair actually coming commentating the Pikeville Thomas Moore game at that moment yeah. there were times where I was watching that and like the last yes. play uh, Kelly Brenner dribbles in and, and yep. doesn't hit the shot and it's over so I was almost between two games at yep. one point I had no I called Courtney Pritchett for a rebound <laughs> on a on the front end of two free throws Courtney Pritchett grabs yep. the, that's not what happened at yeah. all but uh, we're gonna forgive you for that because I think everybody wanted to know the outcome of that game anyway so I think you I think you did everybody a service for that well I certainly tried and uh, you know the celebration is is awfully cool you've mentioned it as we uh, will wrap up this segment here with this mm -hmm. coach but uh, probably, I think, the toughest league in America yeah. at the NAI level. And to be able to, to, to make mm -hmm. it through, it's, a, it's almost a, you know, a war of attrition mm -hmm. or battle. You know, you it just got to, with the injuries and things that you have to uh, overcome at mm -hmm. times and, and all of that stuff, to be able to get through there, just the one loss on the road at Thomas More, super impressive. Yeah, and, and again, I know I, I won't appreciate this team until until sometime this summer. I'll sit back and think, wow, I, how did you manage that? Because, like I say, the the top six teams in our league are national tournament teams, and to go to their place and and be consistent and win, and um, you know, I, I think it says a lot. And I didn't mention it earlier, but with Caitlin Wilkes, I think her 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 cleanup hitter Kayla Luby mm -hmm. has a lot to do with Caitlin's success because when when Kayla comes in, they don't miss a beat. Actually, it comes a little bit more physical. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure we mentioned Kayla in, in that as well. Group effort. The Lady Tigers pick up the win. Their 16th Mid-South Conference regular season championship. And now they turn their attention to the Mid-South Conference tournament. We'll step away, come back, and talk with the head coach about the upcoming tournament here on Tiger Timeout. Your timeout continues here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton with you as we visit with the head coach of Lady Tiger Basketball, Ginger High Colvin. Campbellsville makes their way to Bowling Green this weekend. Thursday night, they begin the Mid-South Conference Tournament. Six Eastern time at Bowling Green High School, five Central. They'll take on Cumberland University as the Phoenix knockoff Bethel last night. Mm -hmm. uh, coach, you look at this bracket. Uh, <laughs> there are no easy roads. There's no right. gimmies. Um, you know, Bethel hosting Cumberland, and they got them, I think, at Cumberland's place they did. last uh, week. Yep. So you kind of think, okay, Bethel just got yeah. them there, uh, but such is life in the Mid-South Conference. Right. You think you have it figured out, and uh, all you of a sure sudden, Cumberland with, with the curveball, and they get a nice road win over a good Bethel club. Yep. Sets that meeting up with you guys uh, tomorrow evening. It does, and uh, I think Cumberland's got some of our um, you know, top three talent in the league. Uh, they, they play extremely hard. Their guards are good. They shoot it well. They've got a great presence in the post. And um, we, we've, you know, we've definitely got our work cut out for us. And it's a Cumberland team. You saw them here. They didn't have Lindsey Freeman. Right. Uh, it was a really tight game down there early in mm -hmm. the year. I think you ended up winning by uh, 10 maybe and uh, pulled away a little late there. Here, a little more under control, mm -hmm. but again, without Lindsey Freeman, right. and that changes Cumberland and Coach Scott Bloom, what they're able to do with that ball club. She's just a, she's a, she's just a full motor kind of kid, and she struggled with some 
injuries, I think stress fractures, and she's only, from what I've heard, I, I don't know that for sure, but just limited in a, the amount of time she can play. And she's just one of those kids that plays so, so hard. She makes things happen, even if the play doesn't work or if the shot doesn't work. She's always defending. She's always playing uh, her guts out offensively, and she, she makes a difference for them, for sure. That game uh, Thursday night in Bowling Green will be uh, piggybacked by another uh, matchup on the four side. You'll have uh, University of the Cumberlands. Mm -hmm. uh, they will take on uh, Freed Hardeman. Uh, Freed Hardeman. Mm -hmm. No, is that the four five? Um, is that right? Yes. Are we to that yeah. point yet? The four five? It is Freed, Freed Hardeman, Hardeman, right? Okay, so Freed Hardeman and Cumberlands. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, you, you know, you're yeah. going to keep a close eye on that one, hopefully, following a win, but it's a Cumberland team that you're kind of attached to. We talked about that. <laughs> no matter what happened last Saturday, yeah. they were going to be in your half of the of the bracket. So Cumberland University, then a potential matchup with two teams that are going to make the national tournament in mm -hmm. the semifinals. Not a lot of leagues across the country can say that. No. And again, if if Freeman had been, if she had been all year long, I think they would be in the national tournament. Um, I think there's still an outside shot um, if they could make a run in this tournament, but. Uh, uh, right now, you would if you started tomorrow, I don't think they would be in, but it's a turn team that I think is capable, very capable, because they've beat a lot of teams that, that will be in the tournament. And uh, then you turn around and play a team that you've just played, and of course that happens with everybody, but that's a, not a, a team you've just played that's in the national tournament. And uh, that's, uh, you know, our top four, are, I, I know our top four, any of those four could win it, and I think you go with five and six, any of those six could win it. And that's the Lady Tigers half of the, the bracket in the Mid-South Conference Tournament on Friday. Uh, Thomas Moore will have Shawnee State to start that one. Obviously, no, yes. we know what Thomas Moore is capable of, but that's right. a Shawnee State team that's got some really dynamic talent. They are dynamic, and they, they have gotten better as the years gone on, and uh, they are extremely talented. Their record absolutely does not um, show what they're capable of doing. They are a very talented team, and uh, you know I'm sure Jeff Hans is not thrilled with, with that as an opening round game. Tigers and Bears will close out the evening slate. Uh, an orange and black matchup as Pikeville <laughs> and uh, Georgetown will do battle. It's a Pikeville club coming off the momentum, the win mm -hmm. over Thomas Moore. They did that without Morgan Stamper, which makes it even more impressive right. because she's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, you look at maybe the post play of Georgetown, Stamper situation, that's going to be an absolute uh, dogfight. It is. Um, and, you know, like I say, I've, I've, I've talked about Georgetown, how talented I think they are. And then you go to the, the flip side with U Pike, and U Pike's um, I'm, I'm a team that I would compare to us. They don't pass what a lot of coaches call the look test. We don't have a lot of athletes down on that end. But when you lace them up and throw the ball up in the air, those are kids that are going to fight till the end. It's a veteran group. It's uh, They've got scores. They can defend. They play extremely well mm -hmm. together. And Coach Williams has done just, a, in my opinion, a phenomenal job with him. Lady Tigers begin the Mid-South Conference Tournament tomorrow evening in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, Tip-off slated for 6 p.m. against Cumberland University. Benji Kelly and I will be on site for the call through the duration uh, of the tournament. Uh, it's a busy season for Coach. A lot going, uh, a lot going on behind the scenes. Uh, Mid-South Conference Awards announced tomorrow. Uh, national tournament stuff down the line coming up. It's a busy time of year. Any rest to be had uh, at the Colvin House? I know Kobe's in district uh, play now. Big, big I mean, it's for Kobe, uh, yeah, so yeah. It's it, we're in basketball fever right now. Um, so no, not a lot of rest. And uh, I think I told you off air. Just uh, my goal is to win games and get the laundry done. And if I can, and keep the dogs fed. Yeah. If we can do those three things, and uh, hopefully, but Richard and Linda are next door. Richard and Linda Robards, and they help us out a lot. And, so we're just we're ready to roll. Coach, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Lady Tigers uh, in Mid-South Conference play tomorrow evening. 88-7 the Tiger, you can catch the game. We'll step away, come back, and talk to the head coach of Tiger basketball. They kept their season alive with a win last night here on Tiger Timeout. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Tiger Time out here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton visiting now with the head coach, Tiger basketball, Brent Vernon. Campbellsville on the road last night. A win over Cumberland's to advance in the Mid-South Conference Tournament. We'll get to that. We'll get to the fun stuff, but first, 
We'll backpedal just a little bit. We haven't talked uh, since last week, Coach. You get uh, the big rivalry game with Georgetown on Thursday, a team that was uh, looking to sew up uh, the conference championship. And, uh, man, you guys had a chance. Yeah. Late Georgetown able to, to hit a few more shots, kind of run out of offense. But uh, a game that was played in a phone booth for the biggest yeah. uh, portion, you went punch-counterpunch with one of the best teams in the country, just uh, just couldn't get over the hump. No, we couldn't. You know, it was a fun night, senior night. Got to recognize uh, Malachi and Malik. But uh, super proud of our guys. I mean, battled with the top ten team in the nation. And like you said, it was just punch after punch. We had the early lead. They came back and tied it up. We took a little lead in the second half, and they got one late, and, and they held on to it. But uh, great atmosphere, great game, a great preparation for us as we were getting closer to the conference tournament. And again, like we said all along, our, our guys have continued to battle and play better, and we're playing some of our better basketball. So really, really pleased with uh, the effort they put forth on Thursday night. And not, I know you're not uh, one on, on big moral victories, but you kind of – that's the, the standard bearer, the barometer uh, of the Mid-South, and they've, they've proven it again here this season. But to kind of see them this late in the year and with all of the, the struggles and, and things that you guys have had to endure, to be able to hold serve with them and, and like I said, go back and forth and, and play at their level for 37 right. minutes there, you had them at their place for a good bit Absolutely. as well. So, uh, again, you're, you're off. But you're not far off. No, we're not. We're knocking on that door. And, again, it's play here or play there and a shot falling down, you know, just one of those things. And uh, sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. And, unfortunately, it's, it's not gone our way enough this year. But uh, as I've said all along, man, uh, not only did we play hard Thursday, we went right back to work on Friday and prepared for Saturday. And, again, uh, just, just so fun to work with these young men. And then looking at Saturday, uh, you know, going into that game that there is a – uh, at worst, a 50-50 chance. You kind of feel like there's a 50% chance at least that you're going back to Williamsburg in this opening round and, and you start to prepare for the Patriots whom you haven't seen in a bit. Um, it, it's a, a veteran club, Coach Matt Daniel, a lot of guys that went through their senior night yep. uh, festivities. I think maybe seven eight, or yeah, eight. Eight, so guys. eight guys. I mean, that is a whole roster. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they answered the bell on senior night. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, obviously they wanted to win big game and, and different things. And uh, it, the way it played out was almost perfect for you, though, because they had some success with some stuff yeah. that you could adjust. Now, that's not, that's not always the case, but they were shooting the three very well. At yes. one point, I think they were 12 of 20, and they hit seven of their first eight in the second half. For lack of a better way to put it, they kind of they buried you uh, yeah. with the three ball. And they didn't give you a chance to really get back in that basketball game on Saturday. No, they didn't. And it was one of those situations. Our, our seed was where it was. Um, it wasn't going to change anything. There was a lot of different scenarios of where we could go, but the most likely was back to Cumberland's. Uh, with about six or seven minutes to go in the game, I guess you could say we were still in striking distance, but we would have had to go on a big run. And we were talking about, do we make a change? I'd been thinking about it for about three or four minutes of running time. Uh, I know uh, Mark had been thinking about it for a while. Him and Coach P had been talking about it. And we talked about potentially switching all ball screens. And uh, during the under six timeout, we talked about it but went away from it. Didn't think it was a good idea because we were getting hurt by the ball screen, but we thought that was how we were going to have to defend it for Tuesday night. And we didn't want to show our, our hand. I mean, it's one of those things. It's one you're never not trying to win a game, but we couldn't give our scheme away of what we thought we had to make adjustment-wise if we were coming right back in 72 hours. Uh, so we decided to keep it in our back pocket, do what we've been doing all year, and Kermelin took advantage of that, and they got the win. And, and for us, it was um, – you know, a little cat and mouse game. Something sometimes you have to do that sometimes you may not want to do, but uh, it, it was needed in that instance. And for us, I think it really worked out uh, the way we, we wanted it to. Well, you're playing the long game. Yeah, and absolutely. Sometimes, you know, uh, you think about it in chess, you have to sacrifice the pawn to win the game. And, yeah. you know, that's one of those things you're sitting there on the sideline and there's not a lot of time to make these decisions. So you can sit, you talk about it now and you can put it in a, in a time frame, but when you look at it in real time, You've got just a minute or two that you're trying to decide, it, are we going all in in a game that maybe doesn't mean anything? Right. Or do we keep this in our back pocket, an ace up our sleeve, so to speak, and hope we can cash in come Tuesday and you're able to do that? Yeah, we were. And it goes back to our, our staff, our players, so competitive, competitive people. Um, but again, so what we did was we still played to win the game. 
but we just didn't show anything that we would do differently because we could still win the game the way we were doing it. Uh, they, they, they took advantage of it, and, and that's okay. But again, like you said, we had to do what was best for us long term. It, it was a situation that um, it, it's a very, very tough decision to make. But uh, again, it worked out very good for us. Worked out for the Tigers. They picked up a win in the Mid-South Conference opening round in Williamsburg last night. We'll step away here, come back. We'll talk with the head coach about that victory for Campbellsville. We'll look ahead as they're back in action on Saturday to take on Freed Hardeman in Bowling Green. Stay with us here on Tiger Timeout. Close out segment here on Tiger Timeout this week as we put a bow on the opening round win for the Tigers. We look ahead at their upcoming matchup with Freed Hardeman across the Mid-South Conference Tournament this coming weekend. Coach Vernon joins me and, and Coach, you go back, we've talked about it, you go back to Cumberland's last night. Uh, you've got to flush the loss on Saturday. You've made some adjustments. Your guys were locked in and it was a complete uh, flip of the script yeah. from the way things played out Saturday, almost a polar opposite. Javon Smith cans a three right off the bat and take a five nothing lead there at one point. You go up 26 to nine. Really, you never look back. There was an early second half run for Cumberland's. They draw to within six maybe, I think yeah. was as close as they got. You slam the door from that point. Jordan Graham hits another three to yeah. push it up to 18. Terrific performance by your guys. All around, and again, it goes back to uh, get back from Saturday, you watch film on Sunday of that game, you start talking about the adjustments, a really great day of practice Monday night in preparation, good shoot around Tuesday morning, and then we were locked in from the jump. And again, it goes back to all of our guys. They, they didn't let Saturday be a detriment to their mindset. Uh, we knew, hey, it's win or go home, or look, win or uh, be done, you know? And, and we didn't want it to be over yet, and I, I don't think anybody ever does. Uh, Defensively, we gave up, I think, 73 on Saturday, and we turned around to only 53 on Tuesday. And uh, defensively and rebounding, we always talked about it. that's what wins in the postseason, and, and we were we were just spectacular. As you take a look at the numbers from that matchup with Cumberland's, Jace Wallace led the way for Campbellsville. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jace had 20 points in the victory uh, for the Tigers, 10 rebounds, 71-55 the final. Jay Milburn with a double-double as well, career high. And, Jordan Graham, Javon Smith, all those guys whose name starts with a J. Uh, they were uh, heavily involved. Malik Muhammad had a dozen in just 13 minutes. It was some fouls here and there. Uh, coach, all in all, a, a complete team performance. It absolutely was. Uh, you know, you go for all the guys you mentioned. Keystone Brown coming off what was a scary ankle situation on Saturday. Uh, placed 37 minutes. If he hadn't gotten the fourth foul with six and a half to go, he would have played the full 40. And that, you know, just talk about a lot of guts right there. Um, from a team captain who does, doesn't want to let his group down. I thought Jace was tremendous. Uh, Malik played great. Um, and then Jay Milburn, you know, was, was so good that it had nothing to do with Malik's play, but you just couldn't take Jay out. Jordan Graham, I think he's just gotten better and better as the year has gone on. I think he played season high minutes, really did a nice job in the second half guarding Stephen Fitzgerald. And, you know, we had to make Fitzgerald and Henson uh, as inefficient as possible. Uh, and we, we did that really well. Four games in the league last night. Only one of them was not decided basically at the buzzer. Yeah. Peyton Cundiff hits a game winner for Lindsey Wilson to upset UT Southern. Uh, in Pikeville, I think it was Corbin Spencer yep. hit the game winner to hold off a potential upset <coughs> by Wilberforce. We were on the bus somewhere between here and Yon, and uh, we, we see Tyler Bird hit a Hail Mary three off the right wing to send Jeremy Lewis's bunch to Bowling Green as they come back and, and knocked off Bethel there with, with a second and a half left. So three of the four, this league uh, is insane. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, you get three upsets based on the seedings, almost a fourth, three of the four games down to the wire on buzzer beaters. Bowling Green's gonna be a lot of fun, huh? I, I think so. I mean, we, you know, coaches we talk and you know, any given night, anybody can win. It's just proven. And last night was that sort of same thing, you know, uh, started with our game and it just sort of trickled down. And uh, I think all the teams uh, have worked so hard for this moment to, 
to give themselves a chance. And I know our team has, and we're very, very excited to, to get to Bowling Green. It's going to be a great experience for our, our team. Uh, I would say young team, and it is. We're 50-50 we're on some youth and, and veteran, but uh, a lot of guys returning. We need this experience as, as we uh, finish out strong this year and prepare for, for the future. But uh, we're just, I think everybody's really excited. I don't, don't think anybody knows what to expect uh, moving forward, and it, it's going to be a, a fun three days. Reed Hardeman, the uh, two seed, the Mid-South Conference Tournament. You get them Saturday night, Coach. Uh, that game, I believe, uh, 6 Eastern on Saturday. Third game of the day at Bowling Green High School. And uh, it, it's a team you almost got at home. Yeah. They got you pretty good at their place. Uh, got rolling early. You played much better in the second half. I think yes. early there yes. was some attention to detail type of stuff that <clears throat> certainly helped uh, the Lions. But you haven't seen them in a bit. It's been right. a, a month or so. And I know they've been a bit banged up. You've mm -hmm. been banged up all year long. So uh, who knows? That may level the playing field to yeah. some degree. But uh, it's a really good free heart. Yeah, team. very good. I mean, Coach Stutz has done a fantastic job. Uh, I don't think any seniors on their team. They've played extremely well. Uh, they have in the last week or two had a few injuries. No idea because of having a bye. Right. No idea who, who dresses and is ready to go for, for Saturday. And, and that's just part of it. You prepare like everybody's ready. Uh, as you said, back in the first semester, uh, a very tough loss at home against them. We played extremely well. Um, and then we went to their place, and they just – they really played a, a total game, a complete effort for their team. So, again, it's one, uh, as we said against Cumberland, it's hard to beat a team three times in a year. Uh, we're looking forward to this opportunity. I know our guys were extremely – happy last night as they should be uh, they're ready to get back to work uh, today as we quickly look over the other matchups there georgetown will take on cumberland u uh in the one nine uh matchup we mentioned the tigers the four five you get pikeville and shawnee state i believe and then uh above you guys in, in the bracket thomas moore will take on lindsey wilson Absolutely, is that right yes. so those are those are the matchups and really the way lindsey wilson's played down the stretch thomas moore's had some injuries Pikeville almost got caught a bit yep. there by Wilberforce. I, you know, Shawnee State may be a play, they Absolutely. may at that four spot, they Latavius Mitchell well. healthy. Yeah. I mean, if they come out of the, the pack with that thing, it wouldn't surprise me a bit. No, I mean, it's just one of those things that I think night in and night out in the Mid-South, you have to bring your best. If you don't, you're going to come up short. And again, tournament time, you may not be able to play as well as you want, but you know everybody's best effort-wise is going to be there. So I expect uh, some knockdown drag outs starting on Saturday on the men's side. And uh, it's just going to be fun to watch all the way around. As we wrap up here uh, last night, the last time you had beat Cumberland's in Williamsburg was 2020. A guy by the name of Tavion Mason posted 23 in the win. He was one of the first people yeah. to text and congratulate you. Looking forward to getting to Bowling Green to watch you guys play on Saturday night. I thought that was really cool. It was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, me, uh, T had a great uh, two-year career here. Ended up finishing at another school. Uh, but he's always been there to check in. And, and again, I think it's what our program's about. We're a family. Uh, to see that text for him, to ask about time, and, and to say he's going to be there Saturday meant a lot to me. Um, and looking forward to seeing him. But, again, it, it's just uh, family atmosphere. You know, we all, we're always checking in on, on our guys. Um, um, there's guys that graduated here that finished their careers that we talked to. There's guys that didn't finish their careers that we still talk to. And, uh, you know, guys like T.A.V.O. Mason, Justin Tucker, uh, we're still in contact because of the experience they had here and just so grateful for all these young men that have come through our program. Congratulations Thanks, on the win. Appreciate Good luck you. this weekend, absolutely. The Tigers in action on Saturday, 6 o'clock, the start time for Coach Vernon and company against the uh, Freed Hardeman Lions, the Lady Tigers on uh, it's Thursday, tomorrow night. They'll uh, be in action at 6 o'clock against Cumberland University. We'll have the call for you on 88.7 The Tiger. For the head coach, Brent Vernon, as well as Ginger High Colvin, I'm Matt Payton. We'll see you next time here on Tiger Timeout.